Welcome, in this video we will talk about the addressing modes of our microcontroller. So what is addressing? Just like in regular houses, addressing refers to where a house, for instance, is located. So let's see examples of different types of addressing that we have in our microcontroller. So imagine you have a neighborhood, you have three streets. We're going to see the three types of addressing. One is going to be the register direct, the other one is going to be the direct address and finally we're going to see the indirect addressing with this example. So the register direct it would be something like this. Imagine you have a box that you want to deliver to this neighborhood and you are going to give an instruction to the person that's going to deliver it. And the instruction is going to say deliver this box to an address. So the address that you're going to give it's going to be a special address and the address is going to be something like the third house. Now, in this type of addressing, only a few houses are going to be accessible in this manner. So for instance, let's say only these addresses or only these houses are going to be able to be delivered in this manner. So for instance, it would, this would be the first house, this would be the second house. However, even if we have more houses, only these are the ones that you are allowed to tell the person to deliver in this particular instruction. So what happens is that, well, when you say this, of course, the box is going to be delivered to the third house. Now, what's the difference with the direct addressing? Well, the difference is in the instruction. Now, if you want to deliver, again, a box to an address, what happens if instead you want to uh, deliver it to some house different than the first six houses I just mentioned? Let's suppose you want to deliver it to the address Lollipop Lane number three. So here the address is not the number of house, but instead it's going to be the name of the street and also the name of the house. With this information, of course, now you can deliver the box to the appropriate house. And finally we have the indirect address. Indirect address is a different instruction. So assume this neighborhood has a security guard. So maybe you can give an instruction like this. Deliver this box to whichever address the security guard will indicate to you. So that means that at the beginning you don't know to which address you're going to deliver the box. So what is going to be the address? Well, the address is not provided directly. You don't know. You only know that the neighborhood is going to be that one. And how is it going to be delivered then? Well, the first step is going to, uh, you're going to go to the security guard. And when you're with the security guard, you're going to ask, where do you want uh, this package to be delivered? And let's suppose that the guard tells you, okay, this package is supposed to be delivered to the address Applesauce Avenue uh, in the house number three. So after that, the box is going to be delivered to the appropriate house. So now let's talk about the addressing of our microcontroller. Addressing refers to the way we access different types of, of memories and even different sections of the memory. Uh, for example, in the RAM, we have the internal RAM, but we also have the register file and the input-output memory. Think of them as different neighborhoods. And of course, inside those neighborhoods, we have uh, some, some of them have special houses and some of them, well, there are just regular houses. Uh, but we can also uh, access external memory and program memory. So uh, the addressing modes that we have in the AVR architecture are basically three. We have the register addressing, we have the data addressing, and we have the program addressing. Uh, register addressing refers to the 32 general purpose registers and the 64 input output register. Data addressing refers to all the RAM. It can be either internal RAM or external RAM. And program addressing refers to when we want to access the flash. Now inside the register addressing, we can have those three types of addressing. Uh, in data addressing, we have all those types. And if you take a close look, we have basically two categories. One is the direct data addressing, and the other one is the data indirect addressing. Of course, the indirect addressing has uh, several variations, but they're basically the same. And in program addressing, we have different types of addressing. 
But again, you can think of them as three big categories, which are direct, the indirect, and we're having a new concept here that is called the relative addressing. Now let's see what the register addressing refers to. We have three types. We have the register direct, which is one register, uh, the register direct, but it accesses two registers and the input output register. As you can see, this is the opcode and inside the opcode, uh, we're telling the microcontroller which address we want to access. In this particular case, we are telling it with these five bits because it says from bit zero to bit four, we're telling it uh, where in a register file, which is of size 32, we have 32 registers over here, uh, we're telling the microcontroller which of those 32 addresses we want to access. This is the example that I told you about the special houses, the six houses in the neighborhood, remember? Uh, there are specific registers that can be easily accessed. The other option is when we can access two registers at the same time. So for example, we have here five bits for accessing one register and another five bits for accessing the second register. On the other hand, we have the input output direct addressing. In this addressing, if you take a close look, you have one extra bit. It's from bit zero to bit five in the opcode. The reason why it's because instead of having 32 general purpose registers, here we have 64 registers. And since we have more registers, we need one more bit for addressing. Now, we are gonna see some examples for instance, we have these instructions, the increment register one, uh, test register 15, or when we have two registers, we have, uh, for example, instructions like EOR. EOR stands for exclusive OR. And you can see that we are accessing two registers in this example. And for the input output register, we have this one here. We have the mnemonics in and out. And with these two mnemonics, we can access any of the 64 input output registers. Now, what about the direct data addressing? Here, we can access not only the special registers, but all the locations in our memory. So because of that, we need more space to store the address. In this particular case, we have 16 bits to tell the microcontroller which address I want to read. And again, this is embedded in the opcode. Some of the examples is this one here. Uh, these are the two instructions that use direct data addressing, which is LDS and STS. The other one is the data indirect. We have two types of indirect addressing. We have with displacement and we have the indirect addressing. Remember that this is the part where I told you that when you are going to access a register, you're not going to give the microcontroller the address directly. You're going to give it to someone else. This someone else is the XY or zero registers. Inside those registers, you store the data you wanna access, and then you just tell the microcontroller, I wanna access whichever address is going to be stored in the register X, Y, or zeta. Let's see an example. I'm gonna skip that. And here is how it would look. You're telling, I wanna load, I wanna read, whichever address is stored in X, and I wanna put it, into register seven. This is the data indirect uh, addressing. Now I'm gonna go back. With displacement is very similar. Uh, you have an indirect address, which is gonna be Y or Zeta, but you also have a displacement. So instead of telling just go to address Y, you're going to go to Y plus a constant that is going to be stored here. So let's see the example. The example would be, Okay, I want you to read whichever address is stored at address Y. So let's assume Y it's equal to 100. So what I'm telling you, it's, uh, I'm sorry, what I'm telling the microcontroller is that I want to access address 103 because Y has the address 100, but I'm adding three addresses and I'm reading that address and storing it into register seven. I also have another possibility uh, in indirect uh, data addressing, which is I can pre-decrement the address or I can post-increment the address. In this one, I'm going to tell access whichever address is in X, Y, or Z. Let's suppose I'm telling the microcontroller to access X, but before accessing X, so let's 
put an example, imagine x is equal to 100. So if x is equal to 100, what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrement that address. And so that address is going to be, it's going to be 100 here, minus 1 is going to be 99 here. And so that means that I'm going to access address 99. And afterwards, x is going to be modified and x is going to become 99. This is for recursive programs because you can access different addresses uh, without the need of modifying x because it's being modified automatically by the microcontroller. The same happens with the post increment. The difference is that if you start at 100, you're going to read 100 first, then it's going to increment and the address is going to become 101, and then you can read the 101 in an iterative process. This is an example. Uh, this is how you tell the microcontroller, I want to read, which is the load, uh, which address I want to read, whichever is in X, but before accessing that address, subtract A1, and whatever it is on that address, store it in register 20. The post increment, if you can see, uh, instead of having minus X, it's going to have X plus. That tells you that first you're going to access X, and then you're going to add one to that address. Now for program addressing, now next is going to be program addressing. I'm going to make another video of talking about program addressing. Thanks for watching.